Hi, this screencast is about some of the laws behind the atomic theory and some of the basic uh, history of the atomic theory development um, starting back in the Greeks time. All right, so um, the first law that we, I want to talk about is the law of conservation of mass. And the law of conservation of mass says that whatever you put into the reaction, you will get the same amount out of the reaction. So in this graphic, it's showing you that if you put um, baking soda and vinegar together into a flask, the um, vinegar is in the bottom of the flask and the baking soda is in the, the uninflated uh, balloon, and they weigh 3.861 grams. And if you dump the baking soda out of the balloon into the flask, and you can see that um, you have that whitish liquid in there, that's probably some bubbles and whatnot. And then the, the gases are caught by the balloon on the top, and you can see through the progression of pictures that you um, make a salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas, and it has the same mass as 3.8. 3.61 3 grams. So the mass has not changed. So what we put into the reaction, we get the same amount out of the reaction, and that's called the law of conservation of mass. Okay? There are two other laws, um, the law of definite proportions, and law of definite proportions says that a chemical compound contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions by mass regardless of the size of the sample or source. So every time I pick up water, it's H2O, and it doesn't matter if I got it in the equator, if I got it on the North Pole, water is always H2O. Law of multiple proportions says that if two or more different compounds are composed of the same two elements, then the ratio of the masses of the second element combined with a certain mass of the first element is always the ratio of the small whole number. So the law of definite proportions is shown here is that hydrogen, two hydrogens and one oxygen, a ratio of two to one, is 12% hydrogen to 88% oxygen. In a water bottle or out of the tap, it's the same compound, it's the same ratio, it has the same mass percent. In multiple proportions, this is shown with a compound of nitrogen and oxygen. So in the first compound listed, you can be NO, which is 14 um, so 16 by mass, or uh, 1.14 if you're doing uh, a ratio. Or you can have NO2, which is 14 to 32, or N2O, which is 28 to 16, or N2O4, which is 28 to 48, or N2O5, which is 28 to 80. That's multiple proportions. Okay, one of the first philosophers to talk about atoms and be um, recorded as having discussions about atoms was Democritus and he lived in Greece in 400 BC and he theorized that if you were to cut something in half and then cut it in half again and again and again eventually you would be left with something so small that you couldn't cut it anymore and he called that part that couldn't be cut anymore an atomos or uncuttable um, that is the smallest individual particle of the substance and then um, everyone continued following his theory along until Dalton. And um, he was in England and I believe the 1700s. And it all he came along with the theory and he did some experiments that all matter is composed of these extremely small particles called atoms. But he said that atoms of a given element are, are in identical in size, mass, and other proportions. And he said that atoms cannot be subdivided or created or destroyed. So we have since learned that there are particles smaller than an atom, but they don't retain the properties of the atom, but rather um, their protons, neutrons, electrons, and such. Adam, um, Dalton also said that atoms of different elements can combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds, and he said that in chemical reactions, atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged. Okay, so the modern atomic theory has taken Dalton's atomic theory and has proven um, not all of it is correct. We know that atoms are divisible into smaller particles and that a given element can have atoms with different masses. Uh, some of the things do remain unchanged, that matter is composed of atoms and that atoms um, of any one element differ in properties from another. Okay, so this last slide that I want to talk about is, this is a, a version of one of the modern atomic theories. This one is a Bohr model. And in the Bohr model, you can see in the center, you have the nucleus, and in the nucleus, you have your protons and neutrons. And in the rings, or the energy levels outside of the nucleus, you can see the placement of the electrons. So in carbon, carbon is defined as having six protons, and um, carbon-12 has six neutrons, and any time that you have an atom, you have the same number of protons as electrons. So you have 
six protons, so therefore leads you to six electrons. So in the Bohr model, the first energy level gets two electrons. The next energy level could have eight, um, eight again in the third, and then it gets a little more complex after that. But so you will need to be able to recognize and draw a Bohr model, and I'm pretty sure that most of you have seen that in your middle school classes, but if not, make sure you ask or do a little more research about the Bohr model.